Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We're going to have a good time here today. Amen. Go ahead and open your Bibles to the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Everybody say the book of Ephesians. Glory to God. I don't know how long I'll be preaching this morning, but we're going to have a challenge sermon. This is a challenge. Amen? You know, we come to church and we get taught, you know, what we have in Christ, who we are in Christ, what belongs to us in Christ, what we can get through being in Christ. We can get blessed. We can get prospered. We can get healed. We can get, you know, uh, soundness of mind. We can get our, you know, we get our marriages fixed. We can get all kinds of stuff done. But today I want to talk to you about something different. How many love Jesus? How many have had the Lord do something special for you? Everybody raise your hand. Why? Because you're born again. Just getting born again is special. I said getting born again is special. Amen? And um, I, I, I love preaching on who we have, what we have in Christ. I love preaching on faith, you know, getting your faith developed. I love telling everybody, you know, you can have what you say. You can get blessed by God. You can receive from heaven by speaking the word of God. We just preached that every Winston this morning, you know, holding fast our profession of faith. But at the same time, you know, there's, there's other aspects of our Christian walk like being called to action. There's a world going to hell. Come on, church. I said, there's a world going to hell. And there's an old saying, there's a going to hell in a handbasket. A very, very big handbasket. The, 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 the church has lost its course. The church has become a place of, you know, uh, appeasement, political correctness, not preaching the truth. Not demanding that people make an adjustment and a change and come into the kingdom. The church has just become a, a playground of political correctness and social experimentation. Where we bring them in, well, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And all the crazy junk that's going on in the church. But let me say, we have a calling. I said we have a calling. And the thing that drove the, the book of Acts church <clears throat> and the thing that drove the Apostle Paul's writings was a development of the saints for a purpose. You have a purpose. Amen. All right. Bobblehead for me this morning. Just let me know you're breathing and your, your body is still functioning. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. Don't bobblehead the cameras, please. Carrie would never do that. Carrie is like... I am on duty. Hallelujah. Just never know what Ben's thinking. <laughs> you kind of look at Ben. And he... All right. Okay, Ben. That's just... what sets... you know, we want to take pictures of Ben and take it to his mom and dad. What's he thinking here? I'm just picking on you, man. All right. But the church was birthed with a mission. I know, you know, are you going to say something else? Think about that. So we, we kind of went right past that. We were birthed with a mission. The church had a purpose from the beginning. Yes, you know, in the past 30, 40 years, we've taught a lot on who we are in Christ, our position in Christ, what, and that's all, and I'm not demeaning that. I want to understand, you know, uh, that is a, a vital part of our growth process. But that's not our mission. Your mission as a believer is not to figure out who you are in Christ. That is part of growing in Christ, but it's not your, it's not your job. It's not what you're called to do. As individuals, we grow. We develop. We, 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 we learn the tenets of faith and the doctrines of Christ. But all of that is an equipping and an, and an establishment of our lives because we have a mission. Amen. And our mission is not to let the Baptists know they need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Like we have the Holy Ghost. You get what I'm saying? Yes, we're to share tr all truth with everybody at every opportunity and help people walk in, the, in more light. I get that. But the mission of the church we find over in Mark's gospel and in Matthew's gospel. Mark, Matthew 28, Mark uh, 16. Look over there. I did say go to Ephesians first, didn't I? Well, we're going to come back to Ephesians. Can y'all come back to Ephesians and, and still live with it? Okay, well, tough. Mark chapter 15, or 16, verse 15, <clears throat> 14. 
And afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he, listen, I believe there's something here we may have missed in the past. Notice they're just sitting around because they didn't believe the ones that told them he was risen. Do you believe Jesus is risen? Then why are you sitting around? If you are, if you've had an encounter with the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've been born again and passed from death unto life, if the nature of the Father entered into you and all your sin was washed away, the nature of sin was taken out of you and the life of God entered into you, we don't need to be sitting around. Too much of what's taught in the church and what we try to preach in the church excuses us from everything, and we just went around, going around telling everybody, I'm under grace, I'm right, I can sin, I can get away with it, I'm still going to heaven. The fact that you're going to heaven is already settled unless you reject Jesus along the way. That's settled. Stop trying to convince everybody you can get away with stuff and still get to heaven. Get off of Facebook and argue, and everybody on the planet while the sinners sit out there and look at you. Hello. Stop posting that Hillsong Church uh, accepts homosexuals into their choir. Stop arguing about what church is doing what with homosexuality. Stop putting out there who's doing what. So Social media is not the place for that stuff in the first place. If we need to take care of church stuff, take care of it in church. Amen. Write yourself a blog. But Facebook, people get out there and argue all the time. I'm just like, I'm so tired of it. So tired of seeing it. So tired of the snide comments. You know? Just, 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 that's not what that was. That wasn't invented for that. We got a world to reach. And so your sinner friends are watching you argue with other Christians about this and about I can fornicate and get away with it. And they're, they're all there going, and most of them know better. Hello? I said most of them know better. You're out there arguing about whether I can get drunk or not and still go to heaven. And they know better. And, they want, and you wonder why they're not flocking into our church. And then we go to the, they go to the churches. They're telling everybody, you can drink wine, you can smoke a stogie, and you can fornicate. It's all okay. You know, we're, we're spending too much, that's what Nathan was talking about. We're spending too much time on the things that are not going to change the world. Amen. Yeah, the church has to deal with stuff. I'm going to err. Error. If I'm going to err, it's going to be on the side of being on the light. I always say, listen, Brother Hagee used to say, if you walk around that slipper ditch back, you'll slide in. Now, a lot of times we use that. You keep hanging around us Pentecostals, you'll slide in and get baptized in Pentecost and in, in, in the Holy Ghost. But you keep hanging around people who are sinning, and you'll start sliding right in with them. We have a mission. Look here in, in, in Mark. So he says, he upbraided them for the hardness of their heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said, what did he say there because they didn't believe and they're just kind of sitting around, go ye? Let me put that in modern English. Get off your duff and get out there. There are people going to hell. I said, there are people going to hell. And you don't care. People don't care that people are going to hell. Now, I'm not saying, you know, don't take it personal. Unless you don't care, then take it personal. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. I'm telling you, I, 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 I remember when I first, I, I hate wearing glasses. That's why I keep taking them off. Even though they're, they're, by, they're the progressive things I'm not supposed to have to take. I, I just hate them. They aggravate the daylights out of me. So I'm not going to be aggravated. I'm going to preach. Remember, remember what it was like when you first got, remember what it was like when you first got saved. I, do you go down to Eastern Carolina and there are stop signs that say go? I got them saved. Some of you are going to go, huh? I preached to a stop sign. Okay? Everywhere you went, you were so excited about what the Lord had done in you, you had to tell somebody. Remember um, 
uh, Jesus set the, the, the man free, he says, you know, don't say anything to anybody. And they went out and published it all over the place. Remember that? He said, don't tell anybody. And he, he, he went out and just told everybody, hey, come see what the Lord did for me. He told him, don't say anything. He went and did it anyway. You just can't help me. Don Francisco did a song, I got to tell somebody. You know, I got to tell somebody. I believe that we need, to, ooh, hallelujah. we need to have a reviving in the charismatic word of faith churches. We have become institutionalized in pet doctrines about us instead of being on fire with the Holy Ghost and an experience with Jesus Christ that drives us to declare what God has done for us to other people. And we need to wake up in our churches. I'm reading stuff from Southern Baptists that make us look like a bunch of weenies. Hello. I'm reading, I, I was, there's a friend of mine, uh, Nathan went to high school with his son. Pastor's here in Greensboro. And I read his stuff that he puts out there. And I am telling you, he's calling for holiness. He's calling for sanctification. He's calling for... Se well, we're Holy Ghost. We're we, we Pentecostal. We believe in the doctrine of sanctification. Well, start acting like it. Amen? I'm reading his stuff saying, my God, that's good. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello? And see, we used to make fun of the Baptists years ago. Come inside for the sermonette so you can run outside and smoke your cigarette. Now they're preaching holiness and getting separated and living right. And, and, and we're probably here preaching live and sin, get away with it. Yeah. Why? Because your experience with God has grown cold. <laughs> your experience with God is not red hot anymore. Because if your experience with God is red hot, you can't help but to share with other people what the Lord has done for you. Now, just everybody close your eyes. Grunt and go, oh. Now you can open your eyes. Now nobody knows who grunted. And I wasn't looking, so I don't know. I heard a bunch of grunts. Amen. We need to be consumed with the pursuit of of the Lord so that, listen, and I understand, yeah, I get it. I get that, you know, that we need to know who we are in Christ. We need to, that, I'm not, we're, gonna, we're not going to stop teaching righteousness. We're not going to stop teaching biblical, biblical prosperity, not crazy prosperity, but biblical. We're not going to stop teaching being healed. We're not going to stop teaching that you can believe God and receive from heaven. We're not going to stop teaching faith. We're not going to stop teaching, you know, uh, all the things that, we, that the word of God teaches. But we are calling you to, a, to your mission. We're calling you to your battle stations. Amen? We've been, we've been, we've been sitting down in the hull of the ship, you know, uh, playing cards, been trained, waiting for the, and then now, now the, this is not a drill. This is not a drill. Going off. I don't remember how the little Trump thing goes, Cap. For the, for the ship, you know. This is not a drill. This is battle stations. All men, your general quarters. <laughs> it's time for General Quarters Church. We have a mission, we have a calling, we have a duty. And all the training we've received and all the revelation we've received and all that's been invested in our life has been brought us to the point of, has, is to bring us to the point to have a red hot on fire experience with Jesus Christ on a daily basis so we can go out into the world and preach the truth and share the gospel with the world so we can save the world from hell. Amen. It is not so we can sit around and talk about what I can get away with and still go to heaven. Well, and listen, Jesus did not say go into all the world, amen, and tell them they can get away with it. He said go tell them repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. We, we're, we're, we think we're going to win the world by minimizing the power of the word, making it palatable. And the reason for that is, is we don't have a red hot experience anymore. So we got to out psychologically game them to get them in. They went with passion. They went with fire. They went with anointing. And the scripture says, and the, they which turned the world upside down has come hither. Oh my God. 
Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not. Listen, this is what Jesus said. He that believes and baptized is saved. He that believes not is damned. He did not say they're going to get in anyway. And they went with such a fervor. He said, these signs will follow those that believe. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they didn't drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. Amen? They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And they went everywhere. The Lord working with them. Confirming. I believe I, I, believe I might be. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm mixing Matthew 28. No, verse, verse 20. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. Confirming the word with signs following. But they went with a passion. They went with a fervor. They went under the knowledge that they could be beaten and thrown in prison. They could be stoned. They could be railed against. They could be mocked. They could, be, they could have all things kind of come. But they came with a fervor and they came with a fire. When they beat the disciples early in the book of Acts, it says this. They took note of them. They were ignorant and unlearned men. But they had been with Jesus. Oh my. We're calling it to a challenge today. I don't care what program you put out there, what kind of slick thing, slick advertising, what you get on social media, mass mailing. You know, you get out there and tell them they can drink and get away with whatever you're doing to try to get people in the doors of the church. What we are going to have to do is we're going to have to go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in with the fervor and the fire of a relationship with Jesus Christ that burns in us. And we're bringing the truth to them and commanding them to repent and come into the kingdom. Say amen on me or help me, Jesus. Or say all three of them. We, we, we keep looking. And, I, and listen, I'm, I'm guilty. We're looking for ways to get the church bigger. How can we, what can we do to get people in? Get on fire. Get, how many of you have ever been by a fire? House burning down. What's the one thing you'll always notice about something on fire? People come to watch you get the church on fire and people at least come out and watch it hello and now they don't even put the fires out they just kind of contain them to the, you know they put they keep everything else from burning up they just keep they don't go in and put them out the house in our neighborhood three hundred thousand dollar house on neighborhood a few years ago was on fire and they could have put it up but they just sat out there and kept water on it so it didn't get up but just let it burn up and we said what do you why don't they put we don't do that anymore what? I don't know if we're years old, but they don't do it's, we don't do that anymore. We just kind of contain it. Really? You're not going to put enough water on to put it up? No, we just contain it. Are you stinking kidding me? What if I got if something in there that's of extreme value? You can put it out and save it. Well, we don't do that anymore. All right. <clears throat> but you know one thing? We did it. Everybody else did it. People were all out on Guilford Road out there park where they could sit there and just watch it. Neighborhood came out and got in a circle around out of the fireman's way and watched it. If we would get on fire for Jesus, people come watch you. They'll start studying you. They'll start checking you out. They see you separating yourself and being on. Uh, my relationship with the Lord is so strong and so powerful. You know, you know and, and, and you're, you're laying hands on the sick and things are happening around you and you're ministering under the power of the Holy Ghost. You got a fervency for God. So we have, we have to revive. We have to revive our churches again. We have to be revived again with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Have a fire for God so that we are going out and laying hands on the sick. We're casting out devils. We're praying in the, uh, the spirit, praise God. We're not picking up poison and drinking it on purpose. Amen. Amen. If you happen to, if you drink any other thing, it means if it happens accidentally, you, you're walking away immune. And you're walking in the power of God. But that comes because you're having an experience with God. You have a heart for humanity and you love Jesus. So they, you know, the Bible says they went back to Jerusalem, hung out, and just talked about how they could go to heaven. It didn't matter what they did. You know what it says in verse 20? Is that what it says, Dick? Is that what it says? What? Have you got the new grace Bible or not? No, it says they, they, they went forth. Hold on. 
He said, go ye. See, they were sitting around. He rebuked them for sitting around. Didn't he back up here? He appeared in them and upbraided them. That's a rebuke. For their unbelief, because they believed not on them who, who had uh, talk, told them they had seen him after he was risen. And then his first words after that is this. After he upbraided them, rebuked me, he said, now get out there. Get out there into the highways and the byways. Go preach the truth. Be on fire. And I'm telling you, as you can start looking in the book of Acts, after the day of Pentecost, they stumbled out of that upper room and the church was never the same all that whole time. They stumbled out of that upper room. Hallelujah. Full of the Holy Ghost. And people came out in the streets. Thousands of people came out in the streets. And they said, what me if this? Some said they're drunk. Some said they're drunk with new wine. They mocked them. And then Peter, the denier. Peter, the soldier ear cutter offer. Hello? Peter, the cusser. What's that? The bad debt caster. Peter who said he would never deny the Lord, but denied him three times. Peter, because they accused him of having the speech of Jesus cussed. Peter, who cut the soldier's ear off. Peter, who went and went and wept bitterly. Peter, who was hiding, but got, ended up in that upper room. Came out in the fire. Remember the cloven tongues of fire. I'm telling you, there's symbolism. We need to be on fire for God. You have got to stop thinking about being Jimmy and taking all the Lord will give me. You got to stop being the farmer and his wife. Lord bless us, bless me, my wife, our two kids, us four and no more. You have got to stop living your life only coming to church to see what you can get for you. And you've got to come to the place once again that you come into the house of the Lord. I'm the house of the Lord. Yeah, you are the house, but you read your Bible, you read the Greek, you study it, and the, the building is also called the church of God. This, this other mess that we don't need buildings because I'm the church of God is a misnomer and a misinterpretation of scripture. When we assemble together is the church of God. It is the assembly place of the saints. And we come here and iron sharpens iron. And we come into a place where we're revitalized and refired. Remember the Bible says they went to their own company. That's the church. And over and over and over again through the book of Acts they got filled again with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and they would say, Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant unto your servants boldness that we might speak in the name of thy holy child Jesus and stretch forth thine hand to heal. <clears throat> Amen. We're so big. See, the church has taken on the wrong, such a, such a, a messed up role that we've made the church the soul saving station. Everybody comes to church to get a message on how to get saved instead of coming to church and getting built up, getting strengthened, getting refired, getting revitalized, getting charged back up and going out there to the highways and the byways and getting them. Now, Nathan and, and, and Daniel, we were on, our, our, on my annual Father Son camp trip with Nathan and Daniel tagged along. Cap could have, would have gone if he could, if he could have gotten off, but he couldn't get off. So it was, it was uh, you know, Daniel was a tag along on this one. Uh, next, we're going to believe God. What? The tie got flipped around. Thank you. We're going to believe God. We're going to get to go next time. Hallelujah. Yeah. Nathan and Daniel went fishing. They caught 22 fish this week. I was in the tent. I didn't catch a one. I could see the pond. I could see all the lines in the water. I could see all the people. I didn't catch a one. The only one I ever touched was the ones I put in freezer bags last night to freeze. He had gutted the last catch. And I put them in the freezer bags to freeze them so we could have them, they could have them later. So it wouldn't go to bed. I didn't catch a fish. Do you know why I didn't catch a fish? Because I didn't go ye. I slept ye. I slept ye good. I mean, you know, I think one time it was a little bit rainy while they were out there fishing, and it was going pitter-patter on top of the tent. Pitter-patter, rainy day, bell, ball, ball, ball. I'm sorry. Little globe charters there. They're, they're one hit out. They're one hit wonder album. Hallelujah. I'm out there. I didn't catch a fish. You don't catch fish if you don't go ye. Are you here? I sat there. I could sit and think about, well, you could drop the line. In the water. I don't care for fish. That's just not my thing. But, you know, I could put the little rooster tail on the hook on there, and I could throw it in the water, and I could drag it across there. I could catch me a trout. Hallelujah. And have it for dinner. I could think of, But I didn't go ye. I slept ye. I didn't get anything. They went ye. 
they got ye. Hello? Are you here? See, we got to stop trying to bring the fish to the shore and go catch them. We think when we get the fish in the bed, they'll, 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 listen, you, we're, 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 we're doing it wrong. We're trying to let the church be the place we convince people they need, that they can get into heaven by joining our rock climbing wall group, by, by joining the women's you know, tour bus group, by joining this, by joining that, by coming in, and we're setting up all, and we're, and we're lowering the standards in the church so that we're not firing the church up anymore. They're not, they don't have, they're not going out here with a passion to reach humanity. And they're crying and they're going to hell. They've got marital problems. They've got physical problems. They've got mental problems. They've got all kinds of problems. And you're coming right over there. You can come right over there and you can help them. But you know, when we lose our passion, when we lose our fire, when we lose our desire, we don't care to share anymore. Who shares things with people? People who are passionate about it. What you are passionate about, you share. Get me around people, and they're drinking, you know, a, a Dr. Pepper. We had some camper neighbors the other way. And I'll share. I'm passionate about real sugar drinks. I hate high fructose corn syrup drinks. I don't like them. They don't taste good. I love glass bottles with pure sugar, cane sugar in them. They're better than anything. You know, and we get talking about soft drinks, whatever. I'm passionate. You know, man, have you tried the Dr. Pepper Heritage? You know, they got the real sugar in them. I'm t so the guy, I gave the guy one. He went to the store and bought some. My passion, I, you know, I'm passionate about things. I get passionate about things. People think, you know, well, you, you talk too much about it. Well, you talk about what you're passionate about. I think the church, I don't think, I know the church has lost its passion for a life that is on fire for God. Hello? And that lack of passion has caused us to accept mantras, teachings, and doctrines that don't require the passion. We're using psychological games to get, convince people to come into the church and get them convinced they're going to heaven instead of them seeing you burn. Hello? Just watching you burn. So your burning drew them out. The burning of a house draws people out. Your life burning for God draws people out. Hello? What an opportunity we can have. Amen? Matthew 28. Hallelujah. Verse 16, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Wow. You, you, you ever get the idea that a lot of people run around telling people stuff, ain't reading this? Teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. He commanded them a lot of stuff. Amen. I said amen. And I'm with you even to the end of the world. Amen. These guys got so fired up about their walk with God. About the resurrection of Jesus. About being born again. They just went out and they just started preaching everywhere. Peter got up on the day of Pentecost, preached that sermon, 3,000 people got saved. That's 3,180 because there was 180 in the upper room. By the eight weeks in, they had another, had another service, 5,000 got saved. They had a one-week revival, 5,180 people in the kingdom of God. That ain't bad for a week revival, is it? And they, they started going and preaching. They started going and preaching everywhere. And people were coming into the kingdom. And in that, let me tell you something. In that day, for remember the first 30 years, it was a Jewish church. And when they got saved, they, their families disowned them. They lost their possessions. They lost everything. Some families would have funerals and bury, bury the casket because they're, or whatever, you know, their, 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 child, their child, their family member was dead to them because they had acknowledged Christ as the Messiah. They were no longer part of their family. 
It was a price to pay. And that's why, you know, the, the, the communal uh, money came in to, was to help take care of those people who were being cut off. Now, some people were wealthy and they had the money and the, the family members couldn't take it from them. And they were, to, they were helping those who had lost everything. It wasn't trying to be communistic. It was, it was brothers and sisters taking care of brothers and sisters. That's why Ananias and Sapphira died because they tried to cheat it. They won the form of godliness but deny the power thereof. But these people sold out everything. And Jesus said, nobody's ever left lands, houses, father, brother, mother, sister, for my sake will not receive a hundredfold in this life. Jesus has already promised, if you'll follow me, I'll return it. It's going to come. But we're so busy trying to be cool. We're so busy trying to be light. We want everybody to like us. We want everybody to read our books. We don't want anybody to be offended. <coughs> The gospel offends evil. It's offensive to people who want to live in sin. It's life to those who want out. But it's offensive to those who want to live in sin. Stop trying to convince people and get on fire. Burn with the passion for the Lord. Get back. We need to come back to church. We need to stop coming in this building and going through the exercises of doing our church weekly duties on whatever service it is. And we need to come in here looking for, looking and believing God's going to put something in us for this service for today. It's going to put a fire in me. It's going to make me more effective next week going out there and burning for the world to see. It's going to make me burn when I get in contact with people. Make them want to know what I got. Hallelujah. Instead of me just kind of walking around and acting like, I, you know, the gloom, despair, agony on me, singing the hee-haw song. That we walk out of here passionate about the Lord. It's hard to stir people up who don't want to be stirred. And we've got to get stirred up. What did David do? Remember David? What's, what's the word it used in the Bible? I forgot what it was, but he... Um, huh? No, David, David was in a tough place, and he, 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 he did something with himself in the Lord. I forgot the word. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Thank you. That's what I, was, I couldn't find the word. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Wait a minute. He stirred himself up. He's in a tough place. Listen, we've all been in tough places. Some of you are in tough places. We've got to, we've got to get on fire again. We've got to be walking out of here, man. Glory be to God. I mean, you've got to be coming to church and say, thank God I'm going to faith and victory today. You know, I, I'm getting fresh wood put in my fire. I'm getting fresh wood put in the stove, and I'm going out of here burning hot. And, you know, we, we had campfires every night this week over at, at, on, on our trip. Every night. You've got to have a campfire. You know, and we, we brought, uh, Joe got me some pallet wood for my, for my fire pit, and we cut, we cut a bunch of that. That white wood burns real quick, because sometimes the other wood was wet. You know, you get wet wood, you get hot enough wood on wet wood, it'll, it'll dry up and burn. And we were putting that white wood in there and getting that, I mean, the flames are up this high. I said, yeah, baby, that's a fire. Amen. But you know what I noticed? As the wood burned down, the flames went down. What do we have to do to put more wood on it? Church is about coming and getting fresh wood put in your stove so you can burn bright. Now, you can't come in here and shut the door of your stove and stoke it down like a, like a wood stove and just get a little bit of heat out of it and just, just enough to keep it going. I mean, have anybody ever worked with wood stoves? You know, what do you do at night? You put the wood in there and you stoke it down, you, you, you turn, turn the vent down just enough so that it'll, it'll keep some heat going all night and not go out. And then when you're up around the house, you, you, you open them up, got to put more wood in there and get it flaming up. We need to stop living our life like a wood stove at night. We've turned it and got that thing, that vent closed right on down. Enough just to keep some coals going. Just to keep enough heat so we don't go out. Hallelujah. What are we going to do? We're going to open up the, have you ever done this? Open up the doors, take the bellows and go, Why is the Holy Ghost also called the Holy Wind? We need to open up the doors of our furnaces and let the wind of the Spirit blow in and stoke the fires and let them flame up once again and burn bright. Why? Because there's heat. When you go down that wood stove in the middle of the night, I mean, you're like, okay, okay, it's not freezing down here. It's barely warm. You get it stoked up, you can't even get near the thing. 
I mean, you're, I mean, Nathan been up there with Joe before, and they, you know, I'm upstairs. They're down there, but getting the thing so lit up. I think Josh has been up there too, with where they're doing that. Had to open the windows, let colder air in, got so hot they couldn't even breathe in there. We need to get so hot with the Holy Ghost, people can't breathe around us. They just got to do something. Amen. So my challenge to you today: is don't be coals, be a fire. Don't come to church. Expecting Pastor Ed to get folks saved. You go into the highways and you go into the byways and you burn with the glory of God. You have a passionate experience with Jesus. So you just want to talk about the Lord with people. Amen? That you're not running and playing hide anymore and you're looking for opportunities not to say anything. You're, you're looking for open. Now my mother-in-law, I love my mother-in-law. But she'll just, you'll be sitting around in the room and she'll just say something hoping somebody will bite. It won't make a bit of sense. Well, you know, they got, they got pork chops on sale at Harris Teeter for $1.99 a pound. And if you say, really, you're, that's it? She's got gotcha. you. Eye contact with her is dangerous. Now, obviously, I, we, we joke about it because I love my mother-in-law, but that woman do love to talk. And she can talk the back end off an elephant. I'm just telling you. Some people say, you know, take the back end of a mule. That's an elephant. That's what, I mean, she can talk. And she'll just, she just says stuff just to get you into a conversation so she, so she can talk to you. She's looking for the opportunity to get you. Maybe think of that old saying, gotcha. Uh-huh. Thought I didn't see you now, didn't you? He Remember that song? <laughs> you all remember, anybody remember that song besides Dick? Okay, Joe. Carrie. Belinda. Bill? Yeah, okay. Bill, folks. All right. The older folks. All right. She loves to talk. She loves to engage people in conversation. She works not because she needs money. She works so she can talk to people. She works at a drugstore. So they got all these customers that come in, and, you know, and if they just so much to say, how you doing? I mean, she gets to find out how Jesse's doing, how Kappa's doing, Shannon's doing, Nathan's doing, Jenny, uh, Susie's kids are doing, Cal's kids are doing, how we're all doing. I mean, she get, you get it all. And there's 15 people in line, but that person's going to get the whole story. <laughs> She's passionate, and I'm telling you, if we have a passionate relationship with the Lord, and we have that burning in us, we are looking for opportunities to share our passion with people. And the Lord has to become our number one passion again. He's what we dream about. He's what we, you know, I mean the old song, Oh, I want to see him look upon his face that I sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, cares all past. Home at last, cares all past, ever to rejoice. I want to go to heaven. Paul said, I'm going to straight between the two, to depart and move the Lord or to stay, with, stay for you. I'm going to stay for you because you need me. we got to be so passionate about the Lord. Yeah, I want to get home. I want to see the Lord, but I'm telling you, I want to take a bunch of folk with me. Why? Because that's his heart. That's his passion. Humanity is his passion. And if we're passionate about him, we're passionate about what he's passionate about. If you're, you, you marry folk, you know this. If your spouse is passionate about something, you develop a passion for it just because you love them. And you want them to be happy. Hello? You don't hear you going home. That's, part of, that's, that's how you grow in your marriage. You know, uh, my, listen, we, me and Nathan were talking the other day on the way up. We were going up to the mountains, and he said, you know, I like the beach, but I just love the mountains. I said, yeah, I was a mountain kid too, but you know what? Your mama loved the beach. And I learned to appreciate the beach to the point that I, I really got to where I enjoyed going to the beach. I didn't when we first got married. Because I got in thir uh, second, almost third-degree burns at the beach as a kid. Had huge blisters on my shoulders. They had to scrape me. My, mom, my, my, my dad said it took five nurses to hold me down to scrape my back and to get, the, to get the, that skin off. I was burnt horrible. So you can imagine, I didn't really care for the beach. <laughs> you know? And then, I'm, then, then me and Janie start dating. She's Cherokee. I'm, my, my dad is Dutch-Irish. 
He's a redhead with freckles. He never got a suntan. He said, my freckles just ran together. <laughs> it was true. His freckles would run together. They'd get bigger and just run together <laughs> during the summer. And so the first time Janie and I went to the beach, we, 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 I had my little Fiat 124 Sports Spider convertible. We went to the beach. We went down to Fort Macon uh, State Park down there at, at, Atlantic, on, at Morgan City, Atlantic Beach area. Went down to the state park and uh, went out on the beach. She says, look, just do what I do. You'll be all right. She's Cherokee. Okay? I got a 124 Spider, no air conditioning. Air conditioning is top down. We come off the beach, we get in the car, we're heading back to the house, we're heading back to Greenville from Atlanta, from Atlanta Beach. And I'm, I'm, I, have, I happen to have a long sleeve shirt in my trunk. I have a long sleeve shirt on. Why? Because it's so hot, because I am burnt so bad. By the time we get back to our house, we walk in, I, I mean, red lobster is at the door seeing if I can come <laughs> get in the tank. I am, br she's brown. But you know what? Janie loved the beach. And so my love for her created the passion for me to honor her and to do things she liked. We ended up being, we're going to the beach all the time, you know. I still love to get up in the mountains. I, I love to get up in the mountains. But she loved the beach. And so that's where we went all the time. And I got to where I actually appreciated it. Big umbrellas sitting under it. Yeah, I could get... Two, week, two weeks I would get a tan sitting in the big umbrella, you know. The, 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 the sun coming through the umbrella would tan me. But I didn't get burnt anymore. <laughs> Woo! My passion and love for my wife caused me to have a passion for what she had a passion for. And your passion for the Lord should cause you to have a passion for what the Lord has. And his passion is one thing. Now you understand, he wants to bless his children, but his heart, the, the number one thing is to win the lost. So he came to seek and save that which was lost. Will you not leave the 90 and 9 and go after the one? He's, he's not going to get rid of the 90 and 9. He's still going to take care of the 90 and 9. He's still going to bless the 90 and 9. He's going to make sure they're taken care of, but he's going to go get that one. The Lord still looking for people who go after the one because that's his heart and it has to become our heart and it has to become and it'll become your heart when you get his heart because you have a passion for him your passion for him will introduce his passion into you so say this say faith and victory church is full of a congregation who has the passion of the Lord to go win the lost. To go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. We're going to compel them to come in. You can get on, listen, if we go on the radio, Christian radio program or Christian TV program, you know what we're going to get? And that's okay if that's what the Lord wants. Other Christians. We need, but it's the sinners we got to go catch. It's the sinners we got to go fishing for. It's the sinners we got to go. Now, Nathan got creative this week. They couldn't catch anything on a fishing line. They couldn't catch squat. So they took the little net. Catch them. They just like, huh? Don't put that on the internet. Cut that out, Bill. They, they were like, you know, they paid for the fish's life, so they're going to catch some fish. They wouldn't bite nothing. Got me a fish. You get creative in catching your fish. Go out there and get them. Be on fire. Have a, have a mission. I ain't coming back without fish. Are you here? You got to have a mission. I'm not coming back without fish. And let me say this. It's time to start bringing them in here. I'm going I'm to come pick you up and bring you in my church. Now that you're saved, you're coming and getting discipled where I know you can get discipled. Bring them. Amen. Let's go get them. Let's build the kingdom. Let's be passionate about the Lord. Let's be on fire for Jesus. This was not my sermon this morning. I hadn't studied this. I hadn't prepared this. I was driving over here, and, uh, and all of a sudden, Mark 16 popped up, and the Lord said, go challenge them. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, 
please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.